Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome to my official 1998-99 season simulation. So a lot of you guys predicted on EA's thread that Detroit would win the cup or Colorado, big teams like that. Also, I feel like teams like Dallas could go on the win it or we could just have a random team like, I don't know, the Ottawa Senators win it. Um, so let me know you guys' pred predictions down below if you did not see that thread at all. Uh, just because I want to see what you guys predict and see how much of you actually get it right. Because who knows with the simulation, it could just go all over the place and we could have a complete outlier win the cup. So before we start up the season simulation, I want to take into account a couple of the changes that I made. So there is now ties, because there was ties back in those days. Also, there is normal icing, so you don't have like the hybrid icing. You also have no trapezoid rules, so goalies can skate out and get the puck if they want to, but that doesn't really happen that often, I don't think. Also to take into account, I did turn off injuries just so I wouldn't have to make so many line changes because there is 31 teams that I'd have to take control of and all that stuff. And I also turned off trades because that way they act like the rosters stay the way they are because they're all post trade deadline rosters. So they're made after the trade deadline. So you have like Mark Recchi on Philadelphia instead of Montreal, that type of idea. So I don't want the rosters to really change up what they currently have. So also take into account that uh, this uh, like game has obviously only four divisions because that's the way that today's NHL is built. Uh, but back in these days, we, there was actually six divisions. So teams like the Phoenix Coyotes shouldn't be in the central division, but I had to move them there in order for this to actually work. And each division has t four teams that actually made the playoffs back in these days too. So it kind of makes a bit more sense of how it's structured. Okay, so let's get into this season simulation. After this, we're going to do a statistical like comparison like by each like team's player stats and whatnot. We're going to compare like the standings and that sort of thing. That way we could kind of see how accurate the simulation actually is. Because it might be rarely accurate, it might not be accurate at all. Because like I've had a couple of simulations that I've done off of YouTube where like teams like the Ottawa Centers win the Stanley Cup or the Boston Bruins win the Cup. But I've also had ones where Detroit's won the cup, Dallas has won the cup, that type of idea. So I'm hoping for a pretty accurate simulation. So far, it's off to a good start for Dallas, which makes sense because they won the President's Trophy back in 98-99 with like 114 points, I think. So hopefully we could get somewhat accurate of a simulation here. I don't know if the player stats are going to be the most accurate because um, obviously with the injuries being turned off, all these guys are going to be playing 82 game seasons, but in real life they played like some of them played like 60 something games because of injury, all that sort of thing. And then the depth guys that I made because I made a couple more depth guys um, before I hit the maximum amount uh, would have actually played some games during the regular season, but in this they won't. So, but Dallas is off to a pretty good start here. 25 wins already. Hopefully they are currently first in the league, because if they could finish first at least, then it will look pretty accurate in that sense. Because they were a pretty deep team in a sense, like they had a really good defensive core, because you had like some, like Sergei Zubov, you had Ed Belfort between the pipes, and then you had some guys like, well you also had good forwards, Medano, Neuendijk, Letnin, Hull, like there's a lot of good guys on this Dallas Stars club. I'm just hoping that uh, teams that also made it like Buffalo and stuff actually do because sometimes Buffalo, they don't make it because their offense is incapable of scoring goals. Um, but obviously their defense is really good with um, uh, Hashik between the pipes. Okay, so I'm slowing this down around this trade deadline just because the fact that the simulation actually slows down around this point. So that way we could stop it and then restart it again. Because we won't check player stats right until, I think, the end of the season simulation. And then we'll compare and then we'll get into playoffs and all that stuff. I'll probably put, like, some sort of, like, timestamp or something. So you guys could jump right to the playoffs if you don't want to see the statistical comparison. Because I know some of you guys don't really care about uh, all the stats and all that stuff. But I'm a bit of a nerd and I like comparing that sort of thing. So it's looking actually pretty accurate right now because of the fact that Dallas is playing so good. But Detroit could also be playing really good. Like the simulation is going too quick that I can't compare, like keep up with it really. So the Dallas Stars finished 44, 22 in 14 and two actually as well. Uh, the two extra ones I think are OT losses, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think they're OT losses. 
or they might be ties. I don't even know. It's kind of hard to read that thing because it's kind of different in real life. So um, let's compare these standings first. Okay, so in first in the actual Western Conference in 98-99 was obviously the Dallas Stars because they won the Presence Trophy. So at least we got the same location and stuff for Dallas put up 12 less points than they did in real life. But it's kind of hard to get teams to get into like 114 points in a season sim. Uh, Detroit in this finished a second with 101 points, but in real life it was Colorado finishing second with 98 points. In third would have been actually Detroit in real life. They finished with 94 points in real life, or 93 points in real life, but uh, here they kind of oversimulated quite a bit. So yeah, Phoenix also oversimulated only by four points because in real life they had 90 points and they were actually the team that finished fourth. Uh, here. Calgary should not have made the playoffs because in real life they were like one of the worst teams. Well, they were actually kind of trending in the right direction, but they still missed um, in real life. But they kind of over by 14 points. Chicago also over by 15 points. So that's a bit of a bad one. Anaheim just barely making it in the playoffs with 83 points, while in real life they had 83 points. Okay, so we had an actually like completely accurate amount of points for the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. In real life, the Los Angeles Kings didn't actually make the playoffs, so that's kind of inaccurate in a sense because they finished with actually 69 points, but in real this, they finished with 82 points. St. Louis and Edmonton should have actually been in the playoffs, but both of them finished just outside of it with 81 points. San Jose also should have made the playoffs. They finished with 74 points. Vancouver and this finished with 67 points and in real life they had 58 points so they simulated pretty bad. Nashville had 63 points in real life and they finished with 63 here so two teams with exact point total so that's pretty nice. And in Sweden and Germany obviously both weren't real teams they're just ones I had to throw in for this roster built to work. Now let's compare the Eastern Conference. So the Toronto Maple Leafs in this finished first with 105 points, but in real life it was the New Jersey Devils. Uh, Toronto over only by, I think that's, yeah, 8 points, because in real life they had 97 points. The Auto Centers in this finished second with 95 points. They did finish second, but they finished with 103 points. So they kind of under but they finished in the same spot. The New Jersey Devils under by 10 points, but they still finished in a playoff spot, so I'm fine with that. Uh, Philadelphia finished 4th in this, but in real life they actually finished 4th as well. But they were only 2 points above of their actual numbers. Uh, Buffalo finished 5th in this, and in real life Buffalo finished... Uh, what spot is that? Buffalo actually finished 6th, uh, so that's kind of close as well. Only 3 points above of what they really had. Carolina finished with 93 points in this simulation, and in real life they finished with 86 points, but they did both make the playoffs as well. And then these two teams, Montreal and the Rangers, should not have made the playoffs. Well, the Rangers kind of just missed out a bit, I think, by like 9 points or something like that. Montreal, eh, Montreal and the Rangers both should be maybe closer down to 9th and 10th than 7th and 8th. Pittsburgh actually should have made the playoffs, so they kind of under by four points, but they still missed out on the playoffs. And Boston kind of under as well because they should have been in the playoffs because they finished with 91 points in real life, but in this they finished with 82 points. Uh, the Czech Republic checks um, didn't exist. Finland didn't exist. Washington missed the playoffs like they did in real life. In real life they had 68 points. They finished with 71 points here. So that's actually pretty close to accurate as well. Uh, Florida finished with 63 points, and in real life they finished with 78 points. So they kind of under but they both like well actually missed the playoffs in real life. So that's good. And Tampa Bay finished down here with 59 points, and the Islanders with 57 points. While in real life the Islanders should be here with 58 points, and the Tampa Bay Lightning should be down here with 47 points. So. I guess this is a pretty accurate simulation because let's see, that's two teams that shouldn't have made the playoffs that did and then in the west we have another three teams so five teams out of the 16 teams that made the playoffs shouldn't have made the team like the playoffs so it's not that bad of a simulation so far 
Okay, so now let's compare goals for by teams in each uh, division, or not each division, each conference. So Colorado finished in this with uh, first in goals for with 235 goals for, and in real life it was actually Detroit with 245, but Colorado was second with 239, so these two teams actually should be up here. In terms of goals against, the best goals against team in the West was the Dallas Stars with 165 goals against, while in real life it was Dallas with 168 goals against, so that is accurate. In terms of power play percentage and stuff like that, I don't know which team had the best power play in the West. I think it might have been St. Louis or Anaheim, but in this it was Colorado with 23.3%. The best penalty kill in the West was the Chicago Blackhawks at an 87.1%. Probably not accurate because they didn't make the playoffs in real life. And okay, so that is the West. Now let's take a look at goals for for the Eastern Conference and compare that. So the leader in goals for in the Eastern Conference was the Pittsburgh Penguins, but they somehow missed out on the playoffs, so I don't know how that happened. In real life, it was actually Toronto with 268 goals for. I think they finished first in the league in that category as well. The best team in goals for in this simulation, or goals against, I, th I, th I think I said goals for, was actually Buffalo, but they finished just below Toronto. Toronto should have allowed a lot more goals than that, because in real life, I think they had one of the highest goals against holes. And then in terms of power play, I don't know who led in the Eastern Conference, but in this, it was the Rangers probably, because they have Gretzky, because I made him a 95, but he didn't play like a 95 really in real life. It's just because he's obviously the greatest player. Well, arguably the greatest player, I should say, because who knows about Mario. Um, I should also mention that Mario Lemieux is not in this build, because he was actually out that season. Um, so penalty kill percentage, Toronto had the best penalty kill in this, but I think they had a really bad penalty kill in real life, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't know how Czech Republic had that good of a, pe a penalty kill, but okay. So yeah, that is the standing comparison. Okay guys, let's get into the comparison for the player stats. So we're not going to go actually team by team, because that's going to take a long time, unless you guys want me to do a complete separate video on each team, because I could always do that. Um... But we're going to just go by league stuff right now just because this video would be way too long without it. So in terms of goals, the leader in this was Luke Robitaille and Doug Gilmore with 36 points. Or not 36 points, 36 goals. While in real life, it was, I think it was Timo Solani with like 47 goals. Because like him and Korea were like tearing it up. In terms of assists, Peter Forsberg, 59 points. I think he... Yeah, this simulation is a little bit underwhelming because, like, this simulation doesn't get a lot over 100 point guys. So, in terms of points, though, this should have been Yarmor Yager, but it was Sakic. Where did Yager even finish? Out of curiosity, he probably finished way down here. Because he sometimes under simulates, like, quite a bit. I haven't even seen him yet. Why is Brian Savage even up here? What the heck? Okay, that's weird. In terms of plus minus, this probably was going to be Scott Stevens or McInnes. And in this, it's Scott Stevens. So I think that's pretty close because his defensive stats, usually Scott Stevens is really, really good. Yeah, it's probably that good defensive stats. Plus 36. In terms of penalty minutes, the leader in this was Kent Klee with 188, which is kind of underwhelming because there's like guys like enforcers like uh, Stu Crimson and stuff like that that would put probably up... A lot more penalty minutes. Bob Probert, too. Who had the most shots? Brian Leach. Damn, a defenseman having the most shots. Okay. That's interesting. The best shooting percentage was Rob Ray. Huh, that's a little bit weird because Rob Ray had actually no goals during that season. 19.5 shooting percentage. In terms of goal and game winning goals, Luke Robitaille, 10 game winning goals. Okay, power play goals. Who led the power play goals? Doug Gilmore, 17 power play goals. Damn, that's a lot. Power play points, Joe Sackick with 34. Shorthanded goal leader was Tor Vikingstad, who didn't ever actually played an NHL game. He's always been in like Europe and whatnot. But other than that, it was Alexei Kovalev, Patrick Poulin, and Mike Sillinger up there. Shorthanded points, Eric Weinrich was also up there, and Guy Carboneau. In terms of time on ice per game, Ray Bork played the most time on ice, which is kind of crazy because he's 38 years of age. In terms of minutes played, yeah, Ray Bork. Faceoffs win 
one pure charge on. Interesting. In terms of face off winning percentage. Yeah, it's probably Turgeon and stuff as well. Or wait, no, it might be Gretzky who had the most. There you go. Wayne, yeah, Wayne Gretzky. I think I made his face off stats like 95, which is maybe way too high, but 92 face offs. In terms of hits, we're probably going to have some sort of accuracy here. Yeah, Darcy Tucker, 175 points. I guess that's kind of close because Darcy would have definitely let in a lot of hits. Um, same with Owen Nolan. David Vaborny, that's kind of a weird one because I don't think I made his physical stuff that good. Uh, block shots, Kevin Hatcher, 142, and Dave Manson. I don't know if those guys blocked a lot of shots in real life because I didn't look really into the blocking shots and all that stuff. Uh, giveaways, Kajel Samuelson, well, he's really old, 40 years of age. And Kari Hakana also up there. Takeaways, Ray Shepard. Um, okay, that... Uh, yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense because Ray Shepard was a really good sniper. But Peter Forsberg also up there. Joe Murphy, Bobby Holik. And then in terms of fights, who had the most fights this year? Ken Klee, 30 fights. And Marty McSorley, 29 fights. Pronger also up there and all that stuff. Okay, so that's the forwards and the uh, defensemen and all that stuff. Let's take a look at the goalies. So the most wins by a goalie was Curtis Joseph with 39 wins. The least amount of losses by a starter, not by a backup, was still finding it. It's all the way probably down here somewhere. Oh, there you go. It is Curtis Joseph as well with 16. Him and Osgood. In terms of OT losses by a goaltender, it was Sean Burke with 6 OT losses. In terms of shutouts, was Curtis Joseph, holy crap, 15 shutouts. Damn, Kujo went off. Broder was also up there with 12 shots. Hasek with 11. Van Biesburg with 10. Balfour with 10. Save percentage by starter Curtis Joseph with a 941 save percentage. Damn. Goals against average. Who had the best goals against average? Curtis Joseph with a 1.72. And how the heck did Bill Ranford as a backup play that good? Because Bill Ranford was not that good as a backup. Hmm. That's pretty crazy. I guess it was just Detroit's defense and stuff like that. Um, in terms of assists by a goaltender, Broder should be up there. Curtis Joseph, four assists. Van Beesbrook, Chick Manick, Waugh, Osgood. I guess Broder didn't have that much assists. Okay, did any goalies score any goals? No, we did not have a goal from any goalies. So there is the player stat comparison. If you guys want to see each individual team, let me know because I might do a separate video on that. I'll just keep the save file. It's just because like it would take a way too long to go through each individual team. Like I was actually already recording each individual team, and then I'm just like, you know, this is gonna take way too long, and I just want to get this playoffs and stuff done. So let's see who is up against each other in the first round of the playoffs. So Dallas has to face LA, okay, and then we also have Detroit in Phoenix, Anaheim in Calgary, Colorado in Chicago. And then in terms of the East, we got the Rangers and the Leafs, the New Jersey Devils and the Canadians, the Sens and the Sabres, which I think was an actual first-round matchup, and the Carolina Hurricanes and the Philadelphia Flyers. So hopefully Buffalo could simulate really good as well, and then maybe Dallas could simulate really good, and if we could have an exact Stanley Cup Finals, that'd be pretty good. So as I said, I also want to kind of like uh, so simulate only the last game where a team wins the Stanley Cup. So we're going to go through these kind of quick. So first round of the playoffs against LA. Let's see what happens in this first four games. And it almost was a sweep by the Dallas Stars. Back-to-back -back shutouts for Belfour. A 3-2 win and then a 2-1 loss. Let's see what happens here in game number five. And Dallas will advance to the second round with a nice 4-1 series win. Hopefully Buffalo also got on to the next round. We'll take a look at the uh, playoff tree again after this. After we see who we're up against in the next round. Who is Dallas going to go up against? It's going to be the Phoenix Coyotes. Interesting. <clears throat> in real life, they I think they only got to the first round and they were outsted in like seven games. Let's take a look at the playoff tree again, and then we'll go to the next four games. So we got Colorado and Calgary in the other 
game in the like uh, the second round. And then we got Carolina and New Jersey and Buffalo in Toronto, which was also another playoff matchup. But I believe it was the conference finals. Maybe it wasn't the conference finals. Maybe it was the second round. It could have been the conference finals, but Buffalo is still in the playoffs. So if we could get a Dallas and Buffalo Cup finals, I would like that. That would be pretty amazing. So let's go the first four games. Come on, Dallas, you got this. We lose, we lose, we lose again, and we got swept. No way. How the heck does Phoenix sweep Dallas? Well, now we're not going to have the exact Stanley Cup Finals, but hopefully Buffalo wins the Cup or something, so that way at least it's somewhat close. But damn, that sucks. So I guess we'll follow Phoenix now. See who they are up against in the Conference Finals. They're up against the Colorado Avalanche, so this is going to be a pretty good matchup, I would assume. Well, at least for Colorado. Colorado's 8-3 and three and Phoenix is 8-2. and two. Who do we have in the Eastern Conference Finals? We have Buffalo and Carolina. So Buffalo might get to the Cup Finals. There's a chance they could face uh, whoever wins the series in the Cup Finals, which would be pretty cool. Because if Buffalo could win the Cup, at least that shows that Buffalo could have won a Cup in 99 as well. So let's go with the first four games. Who is going to be moving on to this Cup Finals? And it's looking like it might be Phoenix because they have a 3-1 series lead somehow on Colorado. I guess maybe to Chuck and uh, Ronick and oh, it's probably Heavy Bullen. Yeah, Heavy Bullen. I made him like an 88, I think. Uh, so he's he simulates pretty good. Okay, so let's get Game Five done. Let's see if Phoenix can go to the Cup Finals, and they don't. So we go into Game Six against or in Colorado. Let's see if Phoenix could outs them now. And they will in overtime. So Phoenix is off to the Cup Finals. Who will they be going up against? They're 12-4 and four in the playoffs. They're assimilating really well. And they're going up against Buffalo. Yes, so Buffalo actually made the Cup Finals. So now this is somewhat accurate. If Dallas would have made it a bit farther. But okay, so Buffalo is 12-8. And, and Phoenix is 12-4. and four. So that is pretty cool. Let's look at the actually the actual tree and see how Buffalo took out their opponents getting up to this cup final. So Buffalo took out Ottawa in seven games, Toronto in six, and Carolina in seven games. Okay. So they might be a bit more tired going into this cup finals, but it should be interesting. It's actually kind of cool because uh, Phoenix has Daniel Breer. So Daniel Breer is going up against the team that he would have played with like for the rest of his career almost after this, I don't remember when he went to Buffalo. It might have been in like 2002 or 2003, maybe 2004. I don't even know. So like I said, we're actually we're going to slow simulate all these games in the finals. Why not? It just makes it a bit more interesting. So game one of the Stanley Cup finals. And it is, which building is it in? It is in the American West Arena or America West Arena. Let's see what happens. Okay, so here we go. Game one. Let's see what happens. First period, and it is scoreless. Uh, Hashik versus Heavy Bull, and that's actually a pretty good gold ending combo. Shots are 10 to 9 in favor of Phoenix. Second period, and it is 1 1. Teppo Newmanen, who also played for Buffalo at a point in time, and Michael Groshek score. So it is 1 1 going into this third period. Who is going to be the hero in game one? Is it going to be the goaltenders, or who's going to come out with the game-winning goal? Just watch it be somebody like Daniel Breer or something. That would be pretty crazy. But it's good that Buffalo at least made the Cup Finals. That makes the simulation a bit more accurate in a sense, because you have one of the two teams that made the Cup Finals in real life do it. And are we going to OT? Yes, we are. Phoenix is heavily outshooting Buffalo 34-25, to but Hashik is keeping their team, his team in the game. Like he did in real life. And Buffalo wins it in overtime. 12 seconds in. Stu Barnes with the winner. So Buffalo is three games away from winning the cup. Yeah, Dominic Hasek definitely gave them that win. Also, Heavy Bowen played really well. <clears throat> okay, so let's get to game two. It's also in Phoenix. Let's see if Phoenix can get back and tie this series up, or will Buffalo take a 2-0 series lead headed home? 
game number two in Phoenix. Come on, Buffalo. I guess I'm going to go for Buffalo because I want the simulation to be accurate. But uh, Phoenix would be cool to win the cup too. First period, and it is scoreless just like last game, I think. Shots are 12 to 7 in favor of the Phoenix Coyotes. Second period, and it is 1 0 Buffalo. Uh, Curtis Brown opens the scoring. Shots are still in Phoenix's favor. Like, Phoenix has been definitely outplaying them in this series. It's just Hashik is a brick behind uh, the net. So, or not behind the net, in the net. Well, he was behind the net a lot of the time, too. But shots are 29 19. Let's see what happens here. Is this the third period? Yeah, this is the third period. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Power play for Phoenix, but they can't score. Last 10 minutes of this uh, third period in game number two, Phoenix, or not Phoenix, Buffalo has a power play, but they can't score. Last little bit, is Hashik going to hold them off again? Yes, he is. Wow. Dominic Hashik, 40 saves. He's been like lights out in the series so far. And Buffalo is two wins away from winning the Stanley Cup in 1999. Technically, that's how it was in real life, too, though, because they did lose the series in six games against Dallas, I think it was, before the controversial Brett Hull goal. So, here we go. We're back in Buffalo at the HSBC Arena, I think it was called still at that point in time. Game three, let's see if Buffalo could take a 3 nothing series lead, or will the Phoenix Coyotes get at least a game in the series? First period, and it's 2 nothing Buffalo. Damn, Hashik just, yeah, like... Buffalo is getting outshot every single game, but Hashik's the one reason. Curtis Brown scores and Miroslav Shatan. Second period, and it's 3 0 Buffalo. Jeff Sanderson. But now Buffalo's actually out shooting Phoenix for a change. Let's see what happens here in the third period. Yeah, it looks like Buffalo's going to take a 3 0 series lead, which is great. Yep, there you go. Dixon Ward makes it 4 0. Heavy Bullen has just not been able to, like, keep his team in the game like Hashik is just is he gonna go for back-to-back -back shutouts six nothing Buffalo holy crap Holzinger and Smelik at goals and the Buffalo Sabres who have been playing great defensive hockey and Hashik has just been lights out have uh, taken a three nothing series lead in the cup finals this is good I, I want to see Buffalo win the cup because like uh, if this is more accurate than it could have been then that's good I just wish Dallas would have made the cup finals as well to make this more interesting. Okay, so after back-to-back -back shutouts and only allowing one goal in three games, can the Buffalo Sabres win the Stanley Cup? We're going to slow simulate the entire game and we'll, inter we'll intervene like with like two minutes left so you guys can watch the celebration and see if Buffalo, if, well, if Buffalo is winning the cup at that point in time. Michael Pekka opens the scoring, beating Heavy Bullen early. And, oh my god, Stu Barnes makes it 2 nothing. Buffalo's offense is playing a lot better than they did in real life because mainly the only reason Buffalo got as far as they did in 1999 was because of Hashik, and it's proven the same case here in the simulation. Second period underway. Phoenix needs to get their offense going. They've struggled for offense. Only one goal so far in the series. 3 nothing. Rob Ray. And Primo makes a 4 nothing. This is a lost cause for Phoenix. They're not coming back from a 4 nothing deficit, not on Hashik. Yeah, Dominic Hashik, I think I made him the second or the third highest rated goaltender in this game. So, Buffalo looking to close out the Stanley Cup now on home ice. One of my friends is actually a Sabres fan, so he's going to really like this because obviously he was pretty upset with 1999, how it actually ended up. So, Let's get this third period underway and see if Buffalo could hold on to this win. They should be able to. Like I said, we'll intervene with like two minutes left or so. So Greg Adams breaks Hashik shutout. Only the second goal in the series for Phoenix, but Groshek makes it 5-1. to one. Yeah, Buffalo is going to go on to win this cup. Keith Carney makes it 5-2. to two. I think he was a former Sabre at one point. I could be wrong. We're going to intervene right here. With a 5-2 score for the Buffalo Sabres. So I'm going to let you guys watch the celebration and all that sort of stuff. And then we're going to um, we're gonna look at the players' stats for the playoffs. And then that will be it for this video. But like I said, if you guys want to see a statistical breakdown of each individual team, let me know. I could always do a video for that. I just don't know when it will be up. Maybe sometime next week. 
So let's get into this and I'll let you guys watch. If you're just with us, it's been a tremendous bit of hockey so far and more to come. The face off, the tie up and a solid job from the winger there. Brings it in for an attack. Good place to shoot from. Say. Oh my, what a hit. Tam's going to have to gather himself after taking that hit solidly. He was not aware where everybody was. A little under three minutes remaining. Seven goals scored, and one team's got five. Can they build on that? Phoenix failed to take advantage on the power play. They might regret this one. Well, they had all kinds of zone time. Really, they didn't leave the zone much at all. But they didn't get the puck into the middle of the ice. They certainly didn't have any traffic in front of the net. And the penalty killers were content to let them pass it around the outside. Hobby Bulin's able to step out and play it. Snapping a pass to Adams. And so the final minute of period number three. One team has really looked forward to the end of this one. The other is going to enjoy even these last seconds. A one-timer! No luck! If that puck hits the net, I think it goes through it. A neutral zone interception. Moving it to Lutkus. Is able to move on in. Nicely received at the point. Good use of the stick. Broke that pass up. Knocked off the puck. Propelled to Para. Great save. Lots on that to Wolniski. Here he comes. Score! He's got his second. Gonna have to say it, Doc, but I told you so. I knew they were gonna eventually score. Enzo, that zips right on by him. He doesn't get much of this at all. Neutral zone face off one. Possession established here. From childhood, the daydream of getting to hold 35 pounds of history, and it's about to come true. They will win the biggest prize. Nuggets getting a penalty for slashing. It's two minutes. Oh, look at the reaction of the puck carrier. He is in some pain. That's a slash. Defensive zone win. Nugget, two went into the players' bench. They can't play it there. It's pretty funny to see fans fight for a loose puck, but as the puck's flipped up over the glass, you see everybody try to wrestle into position so they can maybe get their hands on a game puck. The Coyotes with a face-off win. that goes into even the possibility of winning a championship. Now they have found the way to the end of the road and the Stanley Cup is theirs. The teams are exhausted as they line up for one of the oldest traditions in our sport the handshake at the end of the series. You don't always like the player that you're shaking hands with, 
but you'll have respect for the series that you've just played. The man chosen playoff MVP gets the Conn Smythe Trophy. Boy, is this ever well deserved. This is a tremendous award that probably means more in the coming days than it does now. You don't dream of winning the Conn Smythe, you dream of the Stanley Cup. It's often said it's the hardest prize to win because it takes eight weeks. And by tradition, the captain is the first to hold it high. He's often acknowledged to be one of the best captains in all of sport. To be the leader of a championship team is one thing. To be held on a different level as he is, is quite another. As long as the Stanley Cup has been presented on the ice, and then the players have made a victory lap with it. There's been a pecking order as to how the cup is handed off. Nobody really talks about it. It just organically happens. But everybody knows there's a seniority to the way that this 30-pound trophy is presented player to player. And the final event of any Stanley Cup celebration. What we see on the ice last is everyone gathered together for a very happy Stanley Cup team picture. So there you guys have it. The Buffalo Sabres win the Stanley Cup and Dominic Kasich took home the Conn Smythe, obviously, because he was just a in the finals, only allowing three goals, I think it was, in those four games. Uh, so Groshek had three points in this finals win. He had a goal in the last minute. Rob Ray had two points and assists are your three stars. So now we're going to go through the awards and all that and kind of compare that. And then we're just going to take a look at the player stats for the playoffs, who is leading in points and goals and all that stuff. So Buffalo winning the Stanley Cup means this a pretty accurate simulation in a sense because Buffalo, I think, did they just barely squeak into the playoffs? Yeah, it looks like they might have just barely squeaked into the playoffs. I can't remember if they did or not. Uh, but they did go on to the winning the Stanley Cup because of Dominic Kashuk. It just sucks for Daniel Breer because eventually he would have went to Buffalo, same with Tepo Newman and, and all that sort of stuff. So they end up losing against that uh, team that they eventually played for for quite a few years, at least for Breer. Okay, so Breer and... Okay, so the Buffalo Sabres took home the Stanley Cup. In real life, obviously, it was Dallas. Uh, Toronto took home the President's Trophy in this, but in real life, it was the Dallas Stars. The Clarence S. Campbell actually went to the Dallas Stars in real life, too, but they didn't get it done here. And the Buffalo Sabres actually took home the Prince of Wales like they did in real life, so that's actually accurate. In terms of player awards, Joe Sackick took home the Art Ross Trophy in this, but in real life, it was Yarmir Yager. In terms of the Hart Memorial Trophy, it went to Cujo here, but in real life, it went to Yarmur Yager. The James Norris Trophy went to Ray Bork in this, but in real life, it went to Al McInnes. The Lady Bing Trophy in this went to Eric Dezay, but in real life, the Lady Bing went to Wayne Gretzky. In this, this doesn't really make sense because the Calder is kind of broken when you create players. So in real life, the Calder uh, Memorial Trophy went to uh, Chris Drury. Another former Buffalo Sabre. Um, and actually, in this case, it went to Peter Forsberg, even though Peter Forsberg wasn't a rookie in 98-99. The Conn Smythe goes to Dominic Kashuk. In real life, it went to Joe Neuendijk of the Dallas Stars. Uh, the Vesna in real life, went to Dominic Kashuk, but in this case, it went to Curtis Joseph. 
The Wilma and Jennings goes to Curtis Joseph, but in real life it went to Ed Belfour and Roman Turek, who was the backup for Dallas. The Bill, Bill Masterton goes to Kari Hakana, but obviously he wasn't even an NHL player at that point in time, just because the German team didn't exist. Uh, but uh, in real life, the Bill Masterton trophy went to John Cullen because he retired kind of early into the season because I think he probably got some sort of like uh, concussion or something. I don't even remember. Um, Frank J. Selke went to Steve Eiserman in this case, and in real life, it actually went to Yuri Lettinen of the Dallas Stars. And then the Ted Lindsay goes to Curtis Joseph in this, but in real life, it went to Yarmer Yager. And then the Maurice Richard went to Doug Gilmore and Luke Robitaille in this, but in real life, the Maurice Richard went to Timo Solani, who had 47 goals. So there's a comparison in the awards. Now let's finally just take a look at the player stats for the playoffs. And then I'll wrap up this video. And then, like I said, if you guys want to see, like, each individual team's player stats and kind of, like, me comparing it to the actual stats, let me know because I don't really want to have a video that's, like, two hours long because it's going to literally take me a long time to go through each team. So, in terms of player stats, so, Breer had the most points in the entire playoffs. No, that's just in Phoenix. Um, in, in terms of the entire playoffs, it was Michael Groshek with 18 points in 24 games. Damn. Uh, Gary Roberts was just behind him. Same with Sammy Kapanen. 17 points each. Uh, Carolina was ousted, I think, in the conference finals in this. Uh, Miroslav Shatan also 17 points. Sakic 16 points. Briere 15 points. So he was helping out Phoenix a lot. In terms of... Actually, let's go by goals and stuff like that. The goal leaders so far in the playoffs were actually in the, in the total playoffs was Joe Sakic. Assist leader was Michael Groshek. Point leader we knew was Groshek. Plus minus leader was Glenn Wesley. A plus 15. Him and Merrick Malik were probably a really good defensive combo, I guess. Penalty minute leader in the playoffs was Sean Hill. The shot leader in the playoffs was Michael Pekka. The best shooting percentage by somebody that played a lot of games was Rob Ray. I don't know how Rob Ray shoots that good. Because like I said, I made him uh, like a 79 in offensive awareness, or I don't know if I told you guys that. Game-winning goals was Curtis Brown with four game-winning goals. Uh, game time goals is a kind of a broken stat. Power play goal leader in the playoff was Joe Sakic and Michael Groshek with four each. Power play point leader was Groshek and Forsberg with seven points each. Shorthand goals in the playoffs, there was a lot of guys tied with one goal. Shorthanded point leader in the playoffs was Scott Stephens and Joe Sackett with two points each. In terms of hits in the playoffs, 41, per, uh, 41 hits for Brian Holzinger, Michael Pekka right behind him, and Dixon Ward. In terms of block shots, Jason Woolley, 39 block shots, and Richard Schmelich. So yeah, Buffalo's defense played pretty decent as well. But they did give up a lot of shots in the first couple of games of the finals. Giveaways mostly was Schmelich and McKee for Buffalo. The most takeaways in the playoffs was Robert Cron, who got to the conference finals. The most fights in the playoffs was Sean Hill. How the heck did Sean Hill have nine fights in the playoffs? And Yerky Lume right behind him. I think x -Tech actually met Yerky Lume like yesterday. In terms of goaltending, we already know Dominic Hasek played the best. Yeah, that 943 save percentage and a 1.71 goals against per game on average is pretty crazy. Heavy Bullen was also playing really good. Urbe was playing really good. Patrick Waugh. Yeah, all the goaltenders seem to be playing pretty decently. Brodeur kind of didn't play that good. Hmm, maybe that's why New Jersey went out so early. So anyways, guys, that is going to do it for my official 1998-99 season simulation. Like I said, if you guys want to see a stats breakdown of each player's stat, let me know because I could do a video on that. I just don't know when it will come out, maybe like next weekend or something instead. So let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next one.